Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast, kids. Uh, we got Jared Taylor in the house today. Kind of a serious one. Um, oh, not my favorite, but I have been in a real been grumpy go- mood lately. <laughs> oh, real grumps. Some things have been going on. Uh, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but we've gotten a million questions about them. And all they've asked is, hey, man, what the what, what's the deal with Black Rifle Coffee and what's happening there? Um, this controversy started about a week and a half ago. Um, and we wanted to get you in studio because all well, the messages yeah. we've gotten have been like, dude, make them answer. I want an answer for them. And I was like, hey, man, he's one of our co-hosts. He'll just come in and yeah. answer we, all of the you questions. You guys also so. know us. Yes. Like, anybody yes. that listens to the show has seen thousands of hours of us. <laughs> like, Correct. There's no, Correct. There's no secrets. Over I don't understand. There's no secrets. I don't understand where that phrase came from, the top of the head. What? Because it's referring to like I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's you're referring to a memory. The hippocampus is in the bottom Ooh, back of the brain. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. They're, they're I, I don't really like go that. in surgical yeah. with that. Yeah, there's no need for that. I don't in understand. This conversation. Well, it's, there's <laughs> it's never, high talk, Dan. There's <laughs> never, right never any need for most of the things that I say. No, but in all sincerity, like uh, you guys have been going through this controversy. That's um, I. I the best way to describe it, it was the perfect storm of events that you guys had nothing to do with, in yeah, my opinion. Absolutely. And then it was it, it was a lay, it was almost like I don't even know how to explain it because it was like we woke up to a surprise fire. Right. And we're like, wait, whoa, 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 what the fuck just happened? And we're like trying to figure it out. And it was like, okay, we have to put out that fire. And then nine more started. Right. And we're like, what what wait, what? No. <laughs> No, yeah. no, no, so no. I'll, I'll tell you what we, we were when we found out, actually, because uh, we'd gotten together. Obviously, we moved the entire media company to Austin, Texas. Joe Rogan is here in Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan, I and Giorgio uh, and, and fake Dan were actually having beers, watching the Ohio State game because it was on super early mm-hmm. uh, at a bar here with uh, Saturday morning. Yeah. Young Jamie Saturday. from yeah. uh, from Joe Rogan, yeah, yeah. his producer. And all of a sudden, you know. Eh, middle, you- middle of the first quarter, I'm looking through my phone. I was like, Kyle Rittenhouse got out of prison. He got bailed out. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's wearing a brand new Black Rifle Coffee T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and my first thought, I literally, I, I said, Dan, go to your Twitter right now. Uh, he opened up the Twitter and everything. Oh, and I know. go, my, and my first question to Dan was, <clears throat> there's no way these guys paid for that, right? My first reaction was just to laugh because I knew exactly what was about to happen. Did well, yeah, yeah. you did. I was like, you fucking. I, I did not. So I was like, hey, man, did you pay? For, By the way, did the, you pay for this? Whomever is uh, not that the kid shouldn't support Black Rifle or the Second Amendment. And not that I necessarily think he did anything. Right. I mean, obviously, he did some things wrong, but the, the biggest charges against him are fucking ridiculous. But that, forget about all that. If you're uh, under if you're in a, an under investigation for a fucking murder, probably don't wear a shirt with a gun on it to your first press release right after you get out of jail. <laughs> but that's what that I seems, thought. That seems silly to me. That's why I was like, come on. I understand. Man, but but here, here's the thing. So that's what I thought. And then, but the next thought was, well, did the company sponsor him? Well, basic human intelligence can tell you that the answer to that is no within a, a fraction of a second. Is he 18? Well, I mean, and that was the thing. We woke up Saturday morning and the, there was already coverage of, I mean, they already formed the story. I had seen, I have, I've seen everything from, Guy gets released immediately. We offered a sponsorship to, oh, these guys are now doing X, Y, and Z. And it was just like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, again, like, like we were, that first morning was when we got the most uh, digital attacks. So, yeah. like, I had, I had over 55,000 attempts on my website by midday Saturday of them trying to hack into it. Because it was just, it, you know how these sites go right like like, like the most what i'm most afraid of is 4chan yeah, right, right. <laughs> it, go, it goes terrifying. it goes to reddit and reddit and then and it goes then, to 4chan and uh the people that make up the loosely associated group anonymous which is not uh, it's it's anonymous is kind of like antifa and so far as it is an organization if you want to if you loosely there, there are people that uh that make decisions and control things and they all communicate with one another but it's also these people don't Man, it's like trying to have uh, a group of nihilists. Like, remember the Big Lebowski? 
three nihilists wouldn't be traveling around together, hanging out all the time and t telling everybody they're nihilists. They'd be sitting at home like fucking, I don't care about anything. That's what a nihilist is. You know what I mean? Right. It's like trying to make an, a social group out of antisocial people. It doesn't make any sense. So for, for the record, you guys had nothing to do. We don't know. We had didn't no sponsor him. Nothing. He, the kids, the kid just put on a black rifle coffee. They got it shit. on their way home from Kyle Rittenhouse. They probably went to 5-Eleven and bought it on the way home. Yeah. Really? Yeah, probably. I mean, there I, and that was the thing is, is the, the uh, that first fire was just, hey, we didn't offer this guy a sponsor. Like, all I mean, these we, people what happened? Fucking just what, jumping on us. One of the right. guys they did sponsor, or one of the so they sponsored Blaze Media, mm -hmm. not the whole conglomerate, but they sponsor. I mean, you know how it works, individual because we do the same thing. We yeah, with the media sponsors company. throughout yeah. a series of shows or whatever. One of the shows that it's advertised on thought that that was funny or cool. Posted the picture and then put and his, then put code, his in code in it. And that was, so it that was seemed the thing. like, it was I mean, like that, you could, the well, average let, person looking at that, it seems like maybe something's going on. So you can ask the question, but you shouldn't have the entire answer. But that was the first kind of like, ew. Who, like who right was away. it? Who was the guy that did it and posted the code? I actually don't remember who it was. It was Elijah. Elijah oh, was yeah, his last but, name. But, uh, Coming, I don't know. No, it's not Elijah Cummings. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't. Know. It's, it's Elijah. I watch his, <laughs> Elijah his Cummings. Hot Bob. Who is Elijah Cummings? That that is uh, Elijah Cummings is uh, the black Schaefer. representative. Elijah Schaefer. That's Schaefer. That's Elijah it, yeah. Schaefer. Okay. So uh, Elijah Cummings is the black representative. Yeah, he just from, put his code in well, there. Well, former because Don, he's and that uh, was yeah, like, dead. dude, all of us right away were like, oh, that's tasteless. Like no, and again, like it was like, dude, don't. Like that wasn't that wasn't cool. We don't. No, we, don't we be we've behind, since right? the very beginning of this goddamn coffee company, we have avoided every single year one of the biggest sales holidays of the year, Memorial Day. We know we've always that. said we're not going to profit off the deaths of our friends, right? And we're yep. not going to profit also, off too, murder. Like, either. And and this was this was a thing too. Or whatever they have twisted. You not know, that it's the, it, it was it was the statement was put out. Hey, we're not profiting off of tragedy. It was all oh, tragedy that a that a child molester died. It's like no tragedy that a seventeen year old is is fucking on the biggest story of the country being charged with murder and like people have already deemed his fate half the country has deemed mm. this guy's fate like this kid's life is fucked mm. for what 15 20 years i mean he's people remember his, that? his, his ability like, to to live in a different area right now is severely limited I, I, I understand. I think that's where part of the message started to get lost so when you said it is you it just, just said it, profiting off of tragedy yeah if it was explained like that, I think that that, that would have helped yeah, but more of the people on the two A side. Like, two I side. Everybody's got to understand. Wait, isn't like, a, a loss of life is tragic, right? That mm -hmm. kid didn't know in, in real time that those yes, people exactly. were pedophiles like, or felons that didn't have weren't supposed to have that Glock that he pointed out. They got his bicep blown off. He didn't know any of that shit. We people that have gone to war, people that are police officers and, and EMTs that have seen like human meat just get chewed the fuck up. That's not fun, right? It's not fun. It is a goddamn tragedy. So if you, what are we supposed the, to be fucking tough guys? Like, yeah, fuck him. I'm glad he's dead. Shut the fuck up. It wasn't and that. People that say that have never fired a gun at a human being in their goddamn lives. It, it wasn't that. It was Evan's statements not explaining what the tragedy was. That's just yeah, too much was, faith it, in human beings. But, but also too, it's kind of like we're putting out a single fire at a time. It's, right. it's, we didn't know what's going to get twisted. Right. That's another thing too. It's like, again, our assumption in the beginning is, man, we've been very vocal about our opinions and our positions for years. You can go back to thousands of hours of us on this show, on our show, yeah. on everyone else's show. We've ever, we've never hid who we are. So it's like another one of those things too, where we were, we felt, okay, this is, he, we can correct this. Just say this, you know, here you go. Like, uh, and then, yeah, that's when, that's when everything flipped. And again, everything has been picked apart, like from, from then on, it's but like, over like, and over pick, again, it's pick the, which side, it's the same shit that gets brought up anytime anything gets brought up about black rifle. There's a bunch of, uh, incel, which is involuntary celibate cunts or people that are either associated with or part owners in other military coffee companies. And they're also cunts for the most part. Oh, this was, they this take was any opportunity. Open they can. wound. Yeah. It's, and there was a lot of, there, this was a massive misinformation campaign. Yeah. It's a hundred percent because I've heard everything under the sun. Like, and again, so like the initial, the initial images that were hitting Twitter and Facebook and things like that. So the first things we saw was, there were these images of Evan donating 150,000 to Biden, 1.5 million to Biden. Yeah. Like right. they, these are the first things going out. Again, like 
Evan's, and if that was true, Evan's by getting, the way, I would be asking him for some fucking money. <laughs> yeah. Evan does not have a million and a half no, dollars to throw away the fucking never, political never campaign. Donated. Are you kidding me? And you can't. Can you? No, isn't you it can't. even true? An individual can donate ten thousand dollars. So, so that's the initial piece. Is all this all this shit is going out, and and everybody in the circle is getting attacked on Instagram, Twitter, everything. So, mm-hmm. and it's coming in. Like I, I'd say at the heat, like Evan was getting 5,000 tweets a freaking hour, if that. And so here was, here was another thing that, that happened that they pulled being a big conversation piece that is kind of like, look into this a, one layer deep and it, it's going to be dispelled. There were two tweets that were, that essentially call, eventually called Kyle, like, a cowardice LARPer or a, a piece of shit or something like that. I, I don't I don't know what the exact things were, but I do know the first sentence of those tweets were I stand with Evan. Evan is a stand up business guy, blah, 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 blah. So they were just Trojan horse tweets that were thrown in. Also, too, we were I was tracking a lot of these things coming in mm-hmm. and they were coming off of bot farms and things like that. Mm. People that <clears throat> that followed 65 people on Twitter with zero posts and 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 just replies and things like that. Also, there was a very weird thing. There was about 10 accounts that all had the same description. Twitter is the devil or Twitter is the end of the world. Mm-hmm. So it's like all these things are coming in and they're all pretending to be customers as well. Like, oh, I just canceled everything. And so again, like to start unpacking this was very, very fucking tiresome. Yeah. It's like, so- okay, what? So that's kind of one of the big points is a lot of them are, oh, why did Evan like these tweets saying this? It's like, dude, that was a mistake. Like, we're, honestly, we're getting fucking bombarded right here. Like, he didn't see what the fuck was going on. So it's like. So at what point did you guys decide to release that statement? Because Evan made a video. The statement was first. So that came from our PR our PR company. And, you know, they formed it like a statement would. And again, there was a couple of wording things in there that that were like people took the wrong way. Because uh, the yeah, because the video he posted on Instagram that um, was more like, hey, but, here you guys go. But now that's that's gone. Somebody took that down, so that is no longer on his Instagram. Um, why why is that? I guess I don't know. I thought it was still on. Yeah, I, no. If you, I mean, you, it's you just fine. I it. think I think it was just getting the message out to those that we wanted to get the message out to. Like, and then after that, killing it. Like, there's no reason to 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 keep having the conversation over and over and over again. Cause so it's it, like, you know, he, he has an episode out this morning with Mike Glover that where he talks about his point of view during all of this. So he answers all the questions. So it's like more so <laughs> saying, come to these single spots to mm-hmm. get your info. If you really want it, because really the argument I've been having lately is you didn't come here to ask questions. You came here to just yell and yeah. think and tell me what, we're all secret Democrats and we fooled everybody and we're liars. Yeah. And that, and like, honestly, at that point, I'm just like, just shut up. You, it's didn't, every, know, you didn't know who we were. Yeah. It's every, it's like, every symposium you've ever been to where, uh, people come up to the microphone to ask questions at the end and they spend the first, like they have 60 seconds. They spend the first 50 demonstrating their knowledge on the subject to like clout in front of everybody. And they're like, yeah. so what do you think about that? And yeah. They, and so the person it's, it's on stage, that's the experts like, or, I don't care. I, I mean, the big the big thing is, is it, here are some here are some counter or counter arguments I've heard from people. Well, Mike Lindell, my pillow guy, he didn't have a problem with it. Well, Mike Lindell is worth three hundred million dollars and he sells pillows. Same thing. They, they use the same argument with uh, Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A. They don't have a problem standing strong on their Christian. Views, well, that's not and they just go to now. Not, not entirely true because Chick-fil-A reversed course on everything they were doing. All the anti LGBT. So this is what doing. they're fucking that's bombarding me with right now. Right. And here's the answer. It's very, very simple. Mike Lindell sells pillows. He doesn't have 1,000 videos out there that has black firearms in their, in their mm. content that is constantly toting that line that all the social media accounts love. You know, all of us here know, know what community standards means. Yeah. Mm. They're not defined. They're yeah, real yeah. loose because they can make the decision whenever they want if right. you violated those community standards. So that's the thing is like we have to be very careful in the fact that our marketing, our stance, our position is definitely under attack by one side. And they all own these platforms mm. and all of our <laughs> historical content and everything has guns in it and can be spun any way, you know, when the mob wants to, you know, 
when someone wants to be a hero, you know, it's like, oh, we deplatformed them because we're not we're not going to let firearms be promoted anymore the way that they do. And it's like, OK, I mean, that that's a consideration that you have. To right. Take. And for all and, these people out there that uh, I, I would assume that all these uh, these hater raid drinking people involved in all this stuff right now were probably two years ago uh, uh, bemoaning politically correct behavior and cancel culture and all that shit. But as soon as this is how this just shows how uh, fucking stupid they are, frankly, because anytime there's an opportunity, if the rules apply uh, uh, disproportionately based on how you feel about a subject, then you are an uh, intellectually dishonest cunt. Bottom line, right? Like if something, think about all the governors and mayors, Adler here in fucking Austin, Cuomo, fucking Gavin Newsom, uh, uh, Lori Lightfoot. Think about these people and how you feel when they tell you to shut down your business and stay at home and don't go on vacation, don't see your family, don't go do to, it. and then they do it. Yeah. When you feel that way about that, that's how you should feel about your fucking self when you've been crying about cancel culture all this time. And anytime anybody fucking doesn't stay purist to whatever your fucking personal beliefs are, then you just want to get, get rid of well, them. Well, the big thing is, is a lot stupid. of these arguments that are coming in, like they're not even coming in with, you know, there's, they're saying, hey, the company supported anti-gun left figure. No, they, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. A person did a year ago. And that information wasn't hidden. Like, who was that person? Evan. It, yeah. Like, right. yes, he, he made a donation to Obama in 2008. Seven years before the company existed. Right. The, a bet that we've so talked that, so, about. So that, that is true. That is yeah. part, we've talked about the story like five times. Yeah, it was in, uh, I think the last time we talked about it was Ju June, This also July came of 2017. up in Reddit. When, yeah, okay, when so, the Reddit AMA happened, they threw that all over and everybody yeah. got up and the certain people got up. I mean, the thing Did is- Did he support Obama? Like, no. This no, was he a lost okay. bet. Yeah. He, gotcha. was, he was still an operator at the time. He was working for the agency and- uh, lost a bet with one of his buddies and had to give to Obama. And then show. he was so fucking pissy about it too that he was like, "Well, can I can I, can I give money to McCain too?" And he did four one hundred dollar donations to McCain and had, yeah, to offset had to give five hundred to one, Obama. The one that uh, people are bitching about now is him giving five hundred dollars to Tulsi Gabbard, right? Uh, and the the idea is that once she's a Democrat, so that's not okay. Which is that's and a good she, she that's is a good, the enemy. That's a good like, way. That's, to, that's, that's a good way thing. to live your life. It doesn't matter that she serves her country, but. If you, all you had to do, like, this is a, this is the way a normal human being reacts. You say, Hey, why did you do that? Right. That, that would, that should be your first thing to do. Why? Hey, why'd you do that? That's weird. Yeah. Well, why did he do that? Why, why did he donate to Tulsi Gabbard? Well, I don't want to speak for him, but I know I mean, why he did it. Cause he's well, told yeah, me he 15 just, fucking yes, times. Yes. He said it. He's, he's told us the story. Over I know, but we are audience. He saw it. He, he saw her saw getting her. boxed out by the Clintons and he wanted to get that woman. So to, to qualify, everybody knows this now, right? To qualify for the fucking debates, you had to have a certain amount of percentage in the vote and you had a certain amount of fucking donate uh, donations. And she had right? just gone on Joe Rogan. Yeah. In Talking a, about all of this. Individual. Okay. You needed, yeah. you needed a certain amount of individual, not, not a dollar amount, but you need a certain amount of individual donations plus the dollar amount and the fucking votes in, in primaries and, or, or polls or whatever, or not primaries, but polls, right? You needed a certain percentage. He wanted to get her into that debate because if you all fucking remember, she's the one that took Kamala Harris down. She's the one. She's the reason Kamala Harris is not the fucking presidential candidate. Right. Or, but you don't know that going in. So, yeah, we did. Because she's the one that's been railing on her for the last two years. Well, did Evan know that, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Of course you. he did. We've yes, been talking yes. about it for years now. <laughs> I, you guys have. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I understand. I'm trying to ask this for the audience here. Right. Um, because these yeah, are, but that these was are, that portion in the, in, the vid, in the video that I that I, I, I understand. That I but, and the reason why we want to have you on, but, because you're a comedian, right? And, and fucking hilarious. When I saw that video... Because you were in a judge's robe and all that shit, I don't know what's real and what's not, and neither did the audience. So we've gotten a lot of questions into the inbox of like, all right, why did he donate to, to Tulsi Gabbard? Like, yeah, I'm I mean, just going to ask you what they've asked He us. didn't go very deep. He was like, he was like, dude, I was watching Joe Rogan. I felt bad for her because she was just getting fucking slayed by the Clintons. And he's yeah. like, fuck it. I'll throw this, I'll throw this girl over tip. She's a military veteran. He didn't think anything of it. Like. Yeah, I'd love to see her get in the fucking... I'd love to see her... Like he said, I'd love to see her get on that DNC stage and light it on fire. Yeah, she, she's the only one that's like gotcha. really fucking going she, after she had, But still, it's like... Since since November of, of 2019, uh -huh. before any of this shit even started. Yeah, this was a year ago. She had okay. been... She had been this, she's the one, <laughs> she is the one that has been railing on the Biden-Harris criminal justice bullshit right. that I've been railing right. on. She's the only person on the left. Like Buttigieg wasn't talking about it. Castro wasn't talking about it. None of those other retards you hear about were talking about it. It was just her on the left. So if you're, if you're talking about the, the one time on the main stage in front of everybody 
that we're going to get to expose Kamala Harris and Joe Biden for who they really are. I can't do it. Evan can't walk up on that stage and do it himself. But what he can do is make sure that woman gets on stage. Right? Okay, yes. The enemy. So you're telling me as a matter of foreign policy in America, we shouldn't fucking reach out to Saudi Arabia if we have problems in the Middle East? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm, look, we, I'm we not to, saying We have it. to be fucking best friends and support everything somebody does to put them yeah, in a position the, to benefit the counter thing is, fucking stupid. And here's the argument I've heard from, from comments is not a single dime would ever go to somebody trying to take my rights away. Okay, they... I've heard you. You said Kamala supports the assault weapons ban. Is that going to pass with a red Senate? No. no. So is that a consideration when you're trying to get somebody on the stage to fuck some people up? No, you you're mean, not uh, even thinking about Tulsi that. Gabbard does. Yeah. Or, or, yeah I'm yeah. sorry. Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. But she, yeah. she also was, uh, she also voted for the legislation to make sure the VA couldn't use the mental veterans health stuff. Center, second amendment act or Ve- veterans, second amendment protection. protection act, yeah. act, she yeah. voted to make sure that the government couldn't take your gun away or my gun away because I have PTSD according to the VA, right? So it's not like it's a hundred percent. It's not like she's getting an A plus rating from whatever bullshit gun group. But this comes into why I made the video the way I did, because the way that people are attacking me, it's like, this is a joke. You're calling us anti two A. This is a fucking joke right now. I'm going to say to existing customers that this upset, you can DM me all you want on Instagram or anything, I will have an open conversation with you about everything. Like, because that's fine. But this, this, the trolls, like, yeah. and people may say, oh, well, I went to your YouTube page and you were an asshole. Yeah, because I am an asshole when people flex up on me. And I'm not going to sit around and let you spin some fucked up narrative, like accusing us of being anti constitution, anti two way, or being the enemy over $500 personal donation. Like, I'm trying to I I'm trying to empathize with some of this. Like to think about Dan calls me up and says, "Hey, the owner of Sig donated donated fucking $1000 to AOC." Is that My, true? No, I'm just no, saying. No. I'm just saying like I'm trying to put myself in this situation mm-hmm. as being someone that is marketed has been a marketer inside the 2A community and industry since 2008. Mm-hmm. I I generally know a lot of the people I know all the movements that have happened and the, the peak of our industry and who's been doing what in, in different spaces. And it's like, I'm just saying, I'm putting myself in this position. He calls me and tells me, Sig just donated to AOC. Like, like this the, is a the, hypothetical. The, the hypothetical. The okay. president of Sig or the president of any <laughs> firearms company donated to AOC. I'd, I go, well, maybe he knows her. Maybe they went to high school. I don't know. That's weird. That would be my response. Not to go and be like, fuck you. <laughs> Well, I, I think I, I so, mean this is where I, we've been bred now. But, but, I, but like, I think here's where the problem came in, and this is with like a lot of our listeners that hit us up of like, how do you build a company called Black Rifle Coffee where every single video has a gun in it, and then potentially give money to someone who could win an election that would take your gun rights away? Somebody that had one percent of the national vote could win an election. Great, great, yeah. That seems like, but but you understand where these questions are coming. No, from, right? I don't. I, People are yeah. fucking stupid. It, well, for, uh, let's 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 backtrack it because if your first response to an odd thing isn't to ask why, and rather it is to assume, build an entire narrative inside your own head, and then push that as fact in front of a bunch of other people to such a degree that you're trying to shut down somebody's company and ruin their personal life, then you're a fucking cunt, and you're also really stupid. Oh, I mean, it's just one layer deep things. I mean, uh, to me. Like uh, this morning, uh, comments are like, they, they keep saying, he did something wrong, he needs to apologize to me. No, he didn't. He didn't do something wrong. He did something he wanted to do, which he's free to do. Like, Evan, Evan, you're talking yes. about, not Kyle. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His donation. Yeah. They're saying he did something wrong. No, he didn't. He supported a fellow military veteran. And literally, that is one of our values. We support military veterans. You right. Know what? Guess what? Doesn't mean that we want guns taken away. Doesn't mean we're trying to help get guns taken away. As a matter of fact, we're on the complete opposite end of that spectrum. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, when you guys started the company, obviously, we had all just met. It was in 2014, mm-hmm. uh, right around there. And, and you were talking about Black Rifle Coffee and everything else. And I said, hey, man, because coming from Hollywood, I knew what you guys were up yeah. against, right? Um, and I said, hey, you know they're going to take the word rifle out of the company name one day. If well, this company it, it, gets big it, enough. It definitely. And that's the thing is a lot of people, I think, I think maybe we haven't messaged that, like the different discrimination you get with just the company name. Correct. There's, there's you know, 
the NFL won't let us advertise. Right. You have you have certain certain racing events that won't let us advertise. Certain there's certain things out there that strictly because of the name, and that's the thing. Like, uh, you know, there's certain racing events that deleted Ooh. people's whole. They had they had full sponsorships of a car. Yeah. yeah. Said no more. You can't because you're a rifle yeah. company. And Pen- really, like, yeah. yeah. And Pen- like, Pinterest did the same thing. When we tried to do digital advertising on Pinterest, uh, I think it was 2018. They told us the first reaction, which I expected was, and I was VP of marketing at the time. The first reaction was, well, we can't do this. You guys sell guns. I'm like, well, I mean, they, they probably just flagged the word rifle. So I'm going to talk to a human being, and explain what's going on. Talk to a human being, explain what's going on. And I'm like, we've never sold one gun. Mm-hmm. Not once. We don't advertise guns. We don't do any of that shit. Uh, all we do is sell coffee. That's really it. We, and, and they're like, oh yeah, but it still says rifle. So we're, we're not going to be able to let you advertise here. I'm like, oh, cool. That's, right. So I, and, that's reasonable. And, and, but I guess it comes back to this because this is the same question, you know, we all talked about, and we actually talked about this on a very, very early on podcast and drinking bros, um, where I said, all right, what's worth more in the long run selling the coffee company. If somebody wants to take the word rifle out of it or keeping the word rifle in it, what is the most important to you guys as a company? I mean, this is, this is our baby. We're, we're just building it. Like that's not a, that's not a thought. We're not, we're not going to change the name. Okay. So you'll you'll never change the name. This came from, this came from the service rifle. All of us carried, carried in the service. But, but that's a question that everybody's asking of like, Hey man, yes. Because I think there was, well, there was a story that, uh, you guys had gotten chase, uh, chase had tried to pull out of you guys and maybe stripe. Oh, we've, I mean, we on the back end of the company, right? We lost a bank two years ago Mm. that because of the name. Yeah, yeah, because bank, of the name. Bank pulled out. Are you allowed to say who who that is? I don't remember who don't it was know. actually, but it's it was uh, after one of the mass shootings because yeah. coffee bank, bank straight up. No yeah. shit. Do you know what that does to a company? And that's another thing. Yes, like, yes. <laughs> that's why I wanted to talk about it. Like, because we we've got a guy on right after this named yeah. Scott Galloway, um, a professor from NYU, but, who's a, who's a brilliant guy, and he's talking about trying to break up uh, Facebook and Google and how the government needs to break these up simply for things like this. Where if you, just because it's a word, you guys are a coffee coffee company for Christ's sakes. Like you said before, you're not selling guns or anything like that. The fact that banks can come in and- and Anybody can. That's what I'm saying. All of these services. Yes. Yes. Anybody can drop. And some of these services, there's only one. There's only one in the world. Yeah. Right. Some of these things that require the operation, there's only one. So at the end of the day, you got to think about that. I mean, it's, it's, here's it also too, like, like we're not- making decisions for ourselves anymore. It's not just the three of us hanging out in a garage, boxing, boxing items and saying, no, fuck everybody else. Like right. we're making decisions for 430 people, 430 families. What we say is going to be scrutinized and drugged through the mud and affect all of them. And, and then again, add on a pandemic, the lowest fucking form of unemployment, unemployment we've ever seen. Like, you want to put 430 people out on the street. I'm going to say that's a lot more un American than a $500 donation to a military veteran that happened to be leaning on the blue side. Yeah. Like, right. So, I, so again, like these arguments, like I'm finding them hard to, to empathize with and be like, Oh, I see where you're coming from. And I'm just kind of going like, guys, read between the lines. The people that listen to this show, they know who we are. Yeah. They know we've talked about it. We had a whole episode us together talking about blur the lines. Yeah. How we were sick of the hard right essentially saying, if you're not like this, we hate you. And that's what I've experienced this last week. It's fuck you. You're I've, I've, I've been told my service was bullshit. My combat experience is nothing. It's nothing. We're, you know, liars, fakes. We, we, uh, exploited veterans to market. It's like, no, we are veterans and we're all veterans that served quite a few years a piece and spent years overseas doing this right so it's like uh, dude just chill yeah <laughs> um, there, there's two things if one is it weird to you that in america you can't tell me that i can't go into the women's bathroom and take a shit if i want to if i identify as a woman but a company and that's as a private company we as a private company cannot do that that is discrimination right but I can tell you as a bank that I'm not going to fucking work with you because you uh, uh, have a a picture and the name of an object that is literally protected by an amendment to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I can tell you to get fucked. Does that seem incongruous to you a little bit? 
That's like another. What, what is it that we should be protecting? Are we protecting people's personal identities? Or are we protecting the agency of a human being? Now, that's a big difference. You can fucking color with whatever crayon you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can do whatever you want, but you can't draw in my house. Your, your right to swing your fist ends at my face, for sure. This is a constitutionally protected right to own weapons, to carry them around, whatever the fuck you want to do for the most part. That is a constitutionally protected right. So why does it ever come up? That is a, that is, why is there no discrimination based on the Second Amendment? And there is based on the First Amendment. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but you're also, we've also, how, my, how many times have we seen in the last few years people being terminated for pro-Trump, pro-right? Yeah, for sure. Posts, mm -hmm. support, paraphernalia, you know, what they wear. Yeah. Right. And then here's the thing. Some of these fucking YouTubers that are, that are you know, exposing, <clears throat> by the way, not a single one fucking hit us up. I, yeah, I who offered. Who is the guy in the I, cowboy hat, by the yeah, way? Who gives well, nobody's going to say his name yes. on this show. I, I gave well, him. Everybody keeps sending this video. What did, I, he's I, here in Texas somewhere. Well, if he by the way, to, him if he wants I, to come down to uh, our studio. Plenty of conversations before leading up to this. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you know who this is? been friendly before. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I sent him my number and invited him up. Mm -hmm. So again, like when you watch somebody sit in front of a camera and go, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to expose this and I'm going to give you the facts. Well, listen to this. Number one, he put out an image on one of his videos that conveniently left off the donor tab and just had the, the employer tab mm. of donations. So he was alluding to the audience right. that the company itself yeah. was donating to campaigns. Which is obviously rather not, not true. Giving, yeah, rather than not giving the full screenshot that showed that is what they entered in their employer. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so no, and you have the to, company by the way. has not contributed to a when single you, campaign. When you do political contributions, you have to list your employer, for sure. So what is the responsibility of Black Rifle Coffee Company Incorporated at that point? Are we to tell... That's some, what I've asked. Are we I to, said, are, am, are we am to I tell somebody to screen that, you at the door? Yeah, are we supposed to tell hey, somebody that edit videos that they're not allowed to, to support some other candidate? They have to support ours because that doesn't seem like a very good world to live in. And I would say this as well. Donald Trump is the one that banned bump stocks. He's the one that brought up red flag laws. It's not like this motherfucker is some paragon of the two ways. So let me see your fucking donation profile. Did you give money to him? Like, how pure do you have to be for it to be okay? What's the standard exactly, motherfucker? I, I think what people had the issue with is with the when you build a company on 2A and we're pro-gun and everything else, and then all of a sudden, again, because everybody's cho chosen sides here, like, like you were saying, right or left, you got to be right or left. It's a, it's, it's a, percent, it's a, it's a percentage. It's not, there, honestly, the, the landslide of people are like, hey, we're, we're cool with what you guys did. There's just, I mean, again, it's sifting through who was actually a customer and supporter? Because I can see real quick yeah. who didn't know who we are at all. I mean, I you know I have people go, oh, you're you're gonna piss your boss off so much when he finds out you just said this to me. I'm like, My show boss. the screen, yeah, show the screen, shot, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like people, okay, okay, you just showed me your cards. You didn't know who we were. You probably yeah. never were. A actually, people, and that's why I'm saying now. People, have been if doing you that to were us. a customer a real customer of BRCC or a real fan of the three of us. And you had questions about this situation, DM me. I'll be happy it's to It's pretty talk easy to, to get in touch with any of the three of us. I answer every one time. of my DMs. It's, it's easy to and get I've, in touch with Matt. It's easy to get in touch with Evan. It's I had easy to get in touch with any of us. super angry dude on YouTube, jumped over to my Instagram, and it's fine. Once, once I chatted with him, he was super cool. It turns out he had a salsa company in Texas and kind of really got screwed over with with COVID because it was about to take off. He had a bunch of restaurants that had picked it up and mm -hmm. then boom happened. And now he's like, fuck dude, I don't know what to do. Like once we get into this conversation, then it's like, you have to wonder too. Like we have the, the social media spectrum in the last six months specifically has trained us to be just fucking crazy mm -hmm. on like, rah, like, like just attack. If it's, if it's, we're, we're, we're divided down the middle. We're over here and we're over here. And when, and then couple that, you know, honestly, you got to look at this too. You've got, you've got smaller companies that have tried, that have tried to come in and do what we do. You've got the big companies that look at us that go, damn it, we can't do that either because, you know, we, we would get eaten alive. Yeah. So the second that we were injured, mm -hmm. we got it from both sides. You had, yeah, basically, you had people exploiting to advertise, and that's where a lot of misinformation was rolling out. So you had a lot of exploitation of, hey, they're bleeding. Let's fucking open that wound up a little bit yeah. more. And then 
I, I'm assuming a lot of, you know, you know, seeing attacks from a lot of fucking troll farms, that could be big money. That's yeah. Kind of, who knows? When I said at the top of the show was the perfect storm, what I meant by that was you had a guy who was a controversial figure who was underage, who's 17 years old, whose mom dropped him off uh, with a gun in another state, right? He, he kills, what, two people and put a third in the hospital and all that shit, right? Uh, with your company in particular, you had nothing to do with this. The guy, the kid put on a t-shirt, yeah. decided to walk out. That was his first t-shirt. He was with Ricky Schroeder and everything else. And then bam, three days later, we're in a con entirely different conversation. Correct. And everybody's About a calling company us that is super right. Secret Democrats. Versus, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody that's calling us the enemy, liars, things like that. Whereas you have sat next to Evan on how many shows yeah. saying he's mostly a libertarian. He still doesn't I, I, really. I would, yeah. yeah I wouldn't still, identify him as a Republican he, or a Democrat. No, no yes. I, I mean, really, you're the only one out of the group that was that was fucking hard Trump. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. 100%. I started to like him this year. I started to really identify with the red side of things. And then I catch this from my because I've been working for the red side. Mm hmm. I've been doing commercials. I've been fucking producing shit for Georgia, for the Georgia Senate. Yeah. I've been going to these these turning point things. I've been, you know, my girlfriend is owns Young Americans Against Socialists. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know what? These guys, this is this is this is a place I identify. I like this. And then boom, I see the ugly side of this, and I'm kind of like, ooh, you're pushing me a little over but here. But do, do people not know? I guess that's I don't, the that's, that's the weird thing. Like, do is, they not know who you were? Well. Here's the, here's the data. We have 109,000 people inside the walls of Drinking Bros, Maine, inside, inside our, our group that has existed since 2014. When I, posted, when I posted our statement inside there, when I posted a statement from me mm -hmm. saying, hey, hey, guys, here's what you're hearing. Here's, here's, here's us. From all the people that knew us, there was maybe one or two that got kind of, got kind of real hard lip, like, like, Oh no, this is fucked up. And then over the course of comments and other people, as well as me chiming in, they, they went, Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing it now. So, so out of a post, you know, that goes out to 110,000 people that legitimately listen to the show and legitimately know us yet a few. So, so then it's like, yeah, where, where, where did this, where is all the hate hanging out? And then was it, you know, what populated that? Yeah. And then I guess the question is too, what did you really lose from it? Like, did you guys see like a, <laughs> at the end, like on your, on the sales side, um, because you hear all I this mean, noise, it's right? All drown, it's all drown. It's great right now because we were going into the holidays, sales, everything. I mean, honestly, the biggest, what we really lost was we had four huge pieces of content that were coming out. Like literally that is what our head was down, just working Hard as fuck. Commercials? For the last six weeks. Yes. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> we were about to drop the biggest Black Friday commercial we've ever done, the most money we've ever spent on a piece of content with Corridor Digital. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We were about to drop a mini movie that Matt and Eli made mm -hmm. uh, of Us vs. Predator. Mm -hmm. We had two Coffee or Die episodes that had the fucking full scale making of those. So it's like we had all this shit that we were excited about, and then a Saturday came and it was just. So, so that just nuked it well, all. Well, yeah, because, I mean, we're still, you know, facing, there's coordinated attacks, you know, they're coming in uh, in pockets of like a bunch of people. And it's just, we're not going to put out content right now if it's just going to get drowned out by a bunch of people rolling into hate. It's yeah. Like and you also, stuff you we made for our yeah, fans, yeah. our audience, the people that want to see this stuff. So and you don't want to rope in any of your partner. Like partner, your, yeah. if you get COVID today, stay home, right? Don't come to work and give it to everybody else. But it does. I mean, it, it, yeah, of course it's going to affect the bottom line. Anything like that does. But it's to me, it's worth it to not capitulate. So you, you did. You, you lost money like off it, of that? you won't. Because no, 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 some I'm, people I'm, don't. Won't know until fucking quarter yeah, two of next yeah, year. Yeah, you don't really. You don't. You you can't tell right away because you don't know. Yeah. yeah you don't know what the the immediate aspects of it were. But yeah. It, but and in still, Q4, you make projections on what yeah. you think you're going to do, mm -hmm. but you don't know for sure. I mean, there's a Delta, there's so many deltas in there. But data, the thing is, wise. is we're just, we're going back to business as normal. Yeah. We create coffee and content for people that love America. Mm -hmm. That's it. We create coffee and content for people that love America. Republicans yeah. and Democrats. And, yeah. If sure. you love America, 
go for it. You right. were, we're your guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last one I'll ask you here I, again, because we got fucking bombarded with this shit. Like, and, and I'll just ask you was the, the Cernovich guy. I don't even know why this guy has a following hot Bob. Can you look him up on Who Twitter? There's a guy named uh, he's, Cernovich. He's he has a million fucking followers. Dumb, dumb. Usually I'm, I don't usually know anything. The, I don't know I, anything I, about I, this guy. I usually stay away from the phrase alt-right because I think it's used to describe anybody that's not a Democrat, frankly, by a lot of people. But this guy is a complete piece of shit. So this guy, um, and, you, and you feel free to put him up on screen. If you don't know him, then no, we can I don't, fucking drag I, him. I have okay. no clue. Put, put his face up on screen, uh, Bob, if you can. Or uh, does that have to be afterwards? Because we're not live. Okay, great. But I mean, so yeah, we, yeah that's a perfect freeze frame of, of, of him. I mean, he's, get, he's getting some traffic. He's getting a lot of traffic. And, and here's what he said the day after this happened, which this tweet got sent to us or me personally a fucking million times. And I don't know who this is. That's why I'm asking. But uh, he said, hey, man, I used to like Black Rifle Coffee and Evan before that first round of funding went through. Mm. Um, before? Okay. Before the first round of funding went through. And then after that, they completely changed course, meaning I guess that the first round of funding was from people on the left. Uh, like he, it was a huge threat of this um, that, that just kept getting sent around. I mean, did you see us change in 2017? No, I, I did not. I, I'm asking, but like, what what was it about the funding? Because people were asking. Nothing. And I'm there like, is a, that is completely incorrect information. So, okay, yeah. So whatever this fucking guy is saying about rounds of funding or anything else like i mean does it matter if it's coming from democrats like do you guys give a shit well obviously we're going to pick the best partner for us we had a we had a minority partner come in like someone that has no power mm -hmm. so that's why there was no change so whatever he's saying like again this is this weird gaslighting fucking information spread yeah. that's like oh look i've got this piece of I got this piece of information that's going to that's going to make yeah. a bunch of people go. Oh, oh. He's just trying to get clicks because yeah. at the end of the day, again, where where's the purity test end? Did it end when Cernovich went out and bought his MacBook or his fucking iPhone or when he used Twitter or Facebook? Shut up, you fucking cunt. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hope this guy walks into his fucking bedroom. This morning I don't know. I don't know. Him. I've never seen this guy. I don't know, know, I don't know who it is either. But head. like, fuck him. Uh, I kept getting this fucking tweet over and over again. And, and he calls Evan by his first name, not his. Well, that's why I mean, that's really name. weird. Like, well, I, I just I, none I, of us know who the fuck this yeah, guy is. We don't know who he is. He so, worked there at the time, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so when this happened and this guy, because this tweet went everywhere, right? This fucking Cerno guy. I don't know what he does or or, or what he says, but uh, the way he was referring to Evan is if they were bros no, um, I mean, at some point and then was like, hey, man, I know where your funding came from. It was fucking Democrats and you guys changed like, uh, oh, is he still going on? What, what is this one? What's the latest? What does he say in this one? 90% of Black Rifle's co customer base knows what's up, but Evan took that private equity money and no. now is the left's bitch. So if 90% of the company <laughs> knows what's up, then they should have lost 90% of their business, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, how does he fucking know Evan, I, I guess, is what I don't understand. He pulled like. that picture from the internet. That's not him. And that's the Salt Lake City office right there. It's the front room. Okay. It's, gotcha. the, uh, it's the coffee shop in the front of Salt Lake City. You know, He's never been there. Um, For sure, he's never been there. Uh, uh, Evan may have mentioned some. There was some bankers that he pissed off. I think he like kicked, remember when he kicked some dudes out of our office that he really didn't like. It's happened a couple times. Yeah, it happened and, with. Uh, it happened we with, saw a couple. We it happened saw with couple, Salesforce too. Yeah. Salesforce. We told them to build something for us, and they came in. They sent salespeople, not engineers, mm -hmm. to show us what they built, and they hadn't built it. He was like, "You know what? You guys get the fuck out." I, that was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> From Salesforce, it was really fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love to figure out it, it. By the way, we're going to do the sponsors and then hop into another interview. Yeah. Find out what this guy mm -hmm. does in real life. This fucking one tweet, by the way, I got sent like 80 times from people. And I'm like, I don't know who Cerno is or Cernovich, but he, he has a million fucking followers. So clearly yeah, he does but something. But really like, like uh, when you start getting into this realm mm -hmm. of kind of uh, sub niches, like you look at like the OAN reporters, mm. like they've got like. 800 to 1.5 million followers, but you look at him on any other platform and it's nothing. It's, it's, you know, nominal if that, right. It's like whatever, like Twitter does have a super like big, like politics. Mm -hmm. Like I think I, I, I would guess I, I would say Twitter politics is probably one of the more popular things on Twitter. 
Oh, I, so, I look. I think a, so. If you're someone that built, is, I think politics built Twitter. To be honest yeah. with you, if you're someone that's doing this, you're going to gain a following fast. If you're, I mean, look, it looks like he's speaking or something. Uh, yeah, gorilla, I don't know. There's, there's a another. There's another guy. guy. Yeah, well, yeah, because there's <laughs> another guy that always pops up. Brooklyn Defiant Dad. Um, I hate this fucking guy. He's super <laughs> left. I've never serious. heard of him. Oh, w- wait. Pull up his Twitter. Right. So he's super <laughs> left. Same amount of followers. Eight hundred thousand. I don't know what he does, but all he does is tweet hatred against the president all day long. And he's built up this huge following. So well, what's he going to do now? Uh, well, I, it's, it's exactly it. I, I don't know. And whatever the picture this was, was from like 15 years ago. He's actually looked for a video of this fucking guy. And he's super <laughs> old now. And I'm like, all right, cool, I guess. But like he's selling books and some other things. And like, yeah, there's a, who is Mike Cernovich? Uh, that's this article. Here, here's who Mike Cernovich is. He's the guy that after Trayvon Martin got killed, said this, he said, today we have a moment of silence for Trayvon Martin's rape victims. Kidding. He, he got got before he was able to rape anybody. That's who he is. Oh, God. Holy shit. Yeah. That's who, that's who Cernovich is. That's why I say, uh, look. <laughs> well, there it is. There it is. <laughs> so is, that, he, is, that, is he with a black girlfriend in that picture? Put that up. Like, what? I mean, that's, no? yeah, okay. she looks Spanish. Spanish? I don't care uh, about that. Uh, I here's well, what no. I, if, I mean, if you're that racist, but that just uh, that just sounds like this ghost lighting method of 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 trying to trick people into your information source, calling someone by their first name, pretending you have like a inside scoop. Like, yeah, dude, I've I've seen it all. Like it was really funny. We saw it last night. Uh, we loaded the the episode that Evan did with Mike Glover on Free Range American and. And literally within like five minutes, there's this comment of, I just canceled my subscription. You're not going to blah, 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 blah. And then the, the audience jumped on that person because they're like, that point was at 28 minutes. This was loaded. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like, right. like you haven't even got there yet. Maybe watch it. And yeah. then, <laughs> and, and, and hey, that'll be the final question. Do you think this is from other veteran owned coffee company yes oh, i've seen it I, i've well, seen it not, already it's not just about the coffee companies themselves it's hard to draw a direct correlation but they're uh dude they're, these are proxy they're, wars they're, absolutely yeah they're influencers There's, by and large are talking shit openly yeah. right now and, and promoting other companies as well in the in the byline so it's like fucking black can you believe black rifle you should try this company well like, the, the, the thing is up. i mean you've had it you know i've done i did texas reloaded with dan crenshaw Mm-hmm. I did Georgia Reloaded with Dan Crenshaw again, which again, Dan is is actively trying to help the the Georgia Senate race right now, which is very good. He used some of his I own received, money, right? Uh, yeah. 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 I received tons of hate for that stuff. And it's like, so the thing was, is I think there was there was a lot of a lot of there was a pocket of people that really, really wanted to publicly come out and hate us but they didn't have something to stick to it Mm. other than we associate with tim kennedy and we associate with dan crenshaw because the 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 hard two a guys hate both of those people Mm. by the way i've had plenty of people tell me we asked dan crenshaw voted for red flag laws when was there a red flag law vote there's not been one in any jurisdiction in all of america so far as i can tell and not just congress but anyway is i get a Fuck you for 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 hanging out or doing anything with the guy that voted for red flag laws, and there was again no no, no red flag law no. vote. That's weird. There's Same thing. Been. Like yeah, fuck that, you that, for hanging that's out with the Tim problem. Kennedy. That's the it's problem like, that we talk about a lot on this show, this. and then we uh, Dakota and I talk about it on American Party a lot. If you can't even have the goddamn conversation, if if Dan Crenshaw and I don't, I'm not a fan of his policies. I I don't like him and his policy. I like him as a person. I don't like his policies at all. I think he's fucked. By the way, we can get into that another show. But him and I fucking argued with yeah. each other for an hour you about the state scout bill. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's you the have thing. To. Like, you I'm have to. I'm really good friends with the guy. I love the guy. But guess what? I still argued with him. Yeah, and if you if <laughs> friends should be able to have no, friendly not, arguments, not just though, friends. You, know? you and another stranger should be able to talk about something and both express your opinions without anybody walking away thinking the other person is evil, right? Yeah. Right. You, Dan Crenshaw and Tim Kennedy should ha- should be able to ask the question: If we are collecting this data that they might use for red flag laws. What is our responsibility once we have that information, right? If, we, if somebody, if some data scientist comes and says, hey, these five things tell us to an 80% surety, I'm, I'm making these numbers up, yeah. but let's just say hypothetically, there's an 80% chance that this person is gonna go do a mass shooting within the next two months. 
based on these five points. And the, this guy, does, what is the responsibility at that point? That's the question they were asking. That's a legitimate question to ask. Mm -hmm. And it sparks a debate. And the, the debate was, it was yeah. the, the, the debate ends here for me. And I think it ended there for a lot of people is that information. Yeah. Could save three, 15 lives, maybe 15 people's lives. This sounds coarse. It sounds callous. 15 people's lives are not more important than the goddamn constitution. Sorry. That's why we go fight and die for it. It's not about you. It's not about your little, it's not about COVID. Like the idea that we can shut down our whole economy, your fucking individual life because you're fat or old or sick isn't fucking, particularly if you're fat. If you did that to yourself and now I have to shut down my business, I'm one of the 500,000 people that will my business will never reopen because you're fat or because you're old and couldn't stay home or because we weren't smart enough to see these things in advance. Your life is not more important than me. People talk about my, when you're protecting your building from somebody trying to burn it down, if it's an Antifa riot or, or any kind of riot, like buildings aren't more important than human lives. Yeah, they are actually because that building represents my life. It's my ability to put food on my fucking family's table. And there's a better direct correlation between poverty and death than there are between guns and death. How about that? You fucking idiot. That thing hanging on the wall over there, that constitution is more important than your life. It's more important than mine. It's more important than all of our lives because it's the only thing that tells us what America is. America is not a piece of land. It's not the name of the country. It's not this government. It's not me or you. It's the idea that individual liberty is the most important thing that could ever happen on this earth. It's the only way to govern people that works over time. That's it. And your life's not more important and mine, not, mine isn't. Your ideas aren't, mine aren't. That's it, the end. So what would you like to see going forward here? Because you know, you take a guy like, like a Cernovich or the fucking cowboy guy on YouTube, like by the way, that, that cowboy guy, that the videos they kept sending from this cowboy guy, he was promoting something else. Another on, coffee on, company. Yes. Right. Oh, wow. On you the video itself, that right man. It was weird. I was like, he's another fuck? in a long line of fucking Matt Best copies, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He just did it country. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a country yeah. rap. Country. He's a country Matt Best. What's uh, Matt no, did that fucking moving forward? We yeah. What, what, what happens moving forward here? We're going, we're going back to content and we're going back to good coffee. We're going back to awesome artwork, awesome designs, awesome apparel, everything like Heads down, we're, we will deliver fucking coffee and content to people who love America. That's it. And, and like I said, anyone out there, you feel slighted by this whole thing that was an existing customer or a fan, and you want to talk, message me on Instagram, I'll have the conversation with you. But if you come on any of my shit just opening up with, fuck you guys, you liar, you're going to get the fucking fist right back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, look, we wanted to have you on for that to discuss it because, I mean, obviously it's been in the news and I, I didn't want to, or and Dan didn't feel comfortable talking about it without yeah. one of the owners of the, yeah. the goddamn company on. So uh, we will talk about all of this uh, too after the, uh, the, the sponsors here with, uh, with Scott Galloway about all of this shit that's going on in Facebook and Twitter, mm. what every, everybody's been able to say or not say and everything else here in a second. Uh, stay tuned because that guy is super interesting. We do have some sponsors that pay for this show to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, 30% off to every single person in the world. It is no longer confined to just one individual group right now. And I'm talking about myself on this one. Finally, a day for the civilians, you know? Uh, I'm kidding. Black Rifle Sale, uh, the Black <laughs> Black Rifle, Black Friday Sale has been uh, extended. So this 30% off uh, everything in the store is still going on, uh, I think for another couple days. Uh, check the website, but uh, right now they've got uh, a mattress with a, uh, two free pillows. Uh, they got the 36 month page you go program, no interest there. They get the bundle with the adjustable base. Yes. The adjustable <laughs> base on that. And as always, uh, you can bundle all of that stuff together, all of these savings and get the, the 36 month page you go program, no interest on that. And, uh, the deals are applicable with that. Uh, next up we got liquidiv.com. It's on my desk for a reason. And I look, since we're live, who gives a shit? I'll be able to show this. This is how much I drink this shit every day. Out of this entire bag, there's, that's it, one left, one left out of this. Every morning we have one of these goddamn mm. things. Uh, it'll double hydrate you super fast, man. Uh, you get 25% off liquid IV. 
uh, at liquidiv.com with the promo code Drinking Bros on there. I just get these bags shipped to my house every single month, and then I gas through them. This is the hydration multiplier immune support drink. Uh, they've also got uh, an energy one. They've got, I mean, shit, dude. They've got one for every fucking ache and pain you could possibly have. Or if you're just super hungover, it'll knock out your hangover like immediately. Go to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 25% off. It, it was 30 for a little bit. Is, yeah. it, is it 30? Are uh, they still doing 30 there? On Liquid IV? Yeah. Let me check because I don't, I don't know. If they are, dude, uh, that would be incredible. Uh, let's see. I believe it's Spanish for incredible. But no, I'm not sure. I don't think that's right. No, probably uh, not. No, it's 25. 25, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 25% off at liquidiv.com. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros at checkouts. Again, start the morning off with these, especially as hard as we go. Uh, next up, we got buyraycon.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Best headphones in the business, kids. Uh, these are wireless. They charge up in a little tiny box, and you're good to go for six hours of continuous music as loud as you want. Uh, Dan, you always talk about the bass in these things. Yeah, the uh, bass is the best. I, I challenge you to find uh, an in your ear, earbud that has better bass than this. I haven't found one yet. And I've got 15 different pairs of headphones, whether they're over in your buds. I, I'm a kind of a nerd when it comes to that shit. Mm -hmm. And I just buy, I don't care. I just buy it whenever a new one comes out and test it and see how it works. Yeah. And uh, I haven't, AirPods haven't done it. Fucking Beats haven't done it. Nobody's had bass like this. It's great. It's why I like it so much. And now the battery life is longer than those guys. So what the fuck is the point of buying the other ones? And and, and it's the cheapest on the market right now um, yeah. as far as wireless goes. So uh, look, go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros today. And that URL will get you 15% off of all wireless headphones there at buyraycon. That's R-A-Y-C-O-N. Uh, dot com forward slash drinking bros 15 percent off usually knocks it down to like 65 bucks mm. which is fucking yeah, it's a amazing. really good deal and uh there was a listener <laughs> who wrote us that said and i've washed these things like two or three times and they're still fucking working um <laughs> yeah one one guy in uh in the youtube chat yesterday said he's washed and dried them twice and they still yeah. work i wouldn't recommend doing that i'm not saying do no. that just saying they're very durable no, we're saying you, you can you can and then the last one i, I saved for jared taylor here it's hello tushy.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros hello tushy huh yeah 10 percent off and free shipping right now these are bidets dude. yeah oh yeah yeah Ooh. yeah get that butthole clean I, a guy like you with as much body hair as you have you should probably i don't have a lot of body hair I've seen your lower back, Jerry. Yes, I know yes. what it looks it's, like. It's, and I imagine it's it continues. It's a low-down body hair for yeah, you. I can, I've, it's I imagine. It's kind of like a, a woof. Yeah, yeah, what would you call woof. that? Because you're like me. It's you're, like a you're waist. pretty much hairless. It's yeah. like a waist I think you have a, you have a woof. <laughs> no, you have a body mullet. You have a body mullet. Yeah, That's what it is. A, it's yeah, short up a, top, and in the back, it's kind of long. It's a party yeah, so in the back, yeah. right? Yeah. But because toilet paper is fucking sold out everywhere, again, because we're about to go through this fucking shutdown and everything else. Um, that was the other thing too. Nobody's going to stop buying coffee that delivers to your goddamn house. Like nobody's going to do that. Uh, same with this. Like people are going to look for fucking shit, dude. To, to uh, great, you're going to stop selling toilet paper. I'll get a goddamn bidet. Yeah. Plus, a, a bidet, you can use these things recreationally as well. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not going to tell you how. Figure yep. it out on your own. But figure it out. I do it. HelloTushy.com. Uh, you get ten percent off and free shipping right now at hellotushy.com forward slash drinking bros. That's hellotushy, T U S H Y dot com forward slash drinking bros for 10% off and free shipping. By the way, they're calling it a whole a day sale. Yes. Which I'm not a big fan of puns, but that one got me. Their marketing is on point. You know, they them have and, Fiber Monday. Them and Manscaped. Oh, that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. good. Them and so Manscaped. They're asking you to shit. Them and Manscaped, their marketing is really funny. They're the best. They just talk about dick I mean, balls I talked and to Dan about that like four years ago. I said we could start a toilet paper company. Yeah. Those commercials we should have would be fucking now. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could we could just start making commercials on our own for toilet paper companies we don't even work for. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I, look, everybody switched. I to have a, a collection of cease point. and desist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but people, dude, people are switching to bidet. It was amazing how many people hit me up and they were like, "Hey, I already have that fucking thing." We had a guest on who was yeah. just like, "Hey, man, I already have." I was the AJ fucking, Buckley from yes. Seal Team. Yeah, because dude, he put already got Hello Tushy through his whole house. Yeah, he put him in there. Seventy nine bucks, you can hook it up yourself. It's super fucking easy, dude. And then that's it. Go to Hello Tushy dot com forward slash drinking bros 12 month warranty on that too yeah dude so you can use that thing in your asshole for a whole fucking year spray it out um jared we appreciate you being on the show today and uh and, ready for and another one cleaning this all up what's what's your promo code for black rifle coffee 
Oh, you know, is, is, drinking, it, is still, it Drinking Bros 20? Drinking, drinking Bros, Bros Drinking 20. Bros 20. Drinking Bros, Lord Hot Dog. Yeah. Lord Hot Dog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're all there. They're all there. They're and all then there. Uh, I got some new products coming to uh, to my landing page soon. Yours so. are my favorite, by the way. Oh, uh, you know what? I've, I've taken pride in my personal store. They're great. I've they're got f- some. I got some good stuff coming. So they're the fucking best. Check Instagram. That's where I kind of generally put that shit out. Yes, and uh, you know, speaking of everything that we talked about at I'm the sorry, top of the show, you've got your with- stats listed on this landing page. Uh, years of service. That makes sense. I don't know why turkeys owned is a fucking category on here. I, I, mean, mean, I, I need to update saying. that because I nuked one of them. Oh, so you've only got one turkey? <laughs> yeah, left? I've only got one turkey. Left. Oh, you shot the turkey? And I then shot Thanksgiving. One of them, yeah. And these no. are oh, just so recreational. Getting real violent. Well, well, the thing was, it, it really was. It was getting super violent. It was attacking the kids. Yeah, there's one of them that's kind everything of like that. Really, so I uh, shot it in the face with a shotgun, and that's when I learned no one in our area will process birds. Really? Huh. So, like, I was like excited to go get it, like, to yeah, get no, my turkey pluck back, those fucking things. and like, yeah. and then they, no one, none of the processing centers would take them. They said it's just too hard to. It's, it's uh, too long. Get rid yeah. of the bacteria. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's man. Stupid. What else we got? Over? Well, so here are the categories uh, in your bio. Well, let me expand it. Yeah, it's all. Of them. Uh, so years of service is one. Turkey's own filming skills, films made, and vocals. Now. Years of service Films made is incorrect too. Years of service is listed as a number 14. That makes sense. The rest are listed as bullets, like literal bullets. So Turkey zoned two at the time. That was true. That makes sense. There's two bullets there. Filming skills. It has seven. It looks like, I don't know what it or is. No, that's six. Out of. What does that mean? Six out of what? I don't know. And uh, the next one is films made. It's three. That's even, that's not even close not to true. Seven. Uh, yeah. yeah. Vocals is five. What the fuck does that I've mean? I've made four with you alone. Easily. Five. <laughs> vocals is five. Again, you, you we need to, you've done every vocal too for Matt's song. Yeah. Like in the back, you've, you're like the master vocalist. Like <laughs> I'm going to, you've done everybody's I'm going to hire, a, I'm going to hire a data company to show you why this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make any well, sense. Well, hopefully, uh, soon my website will be back up my personal website. You know, once it's done getting attacked. Yeah. 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 Uh, in the meantime, Hey, like I said, at the top, um, we got Scott Galloway on to talk about, uh, yeah. breaking up Facebook and Twitter and all the bullshit that's happening to these guys and everybody else. Um, Giorgio patch him in right now. Uh, this guy's unbelievably fascinating. He's got a podcast as well. Um, and movie. I would, uh, I, I would love to see him and Dan have their own show one yeah. day. Patch in Scott Galloway. Welcome to drinking bros podcast. Uh, we've got professor Scott Galloway on the show today. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thanks. Nice to be with you. Are you re are you reading something right now? Are you researching something right now? I was doing a text. I forgot. I forgot that um, I'm actually on video camera and I have to give you my full attention. <laughs> what are, seriously, what are you, my wife? <laughs> I've, I feel like you might be Dan's father. Um, yeah, at I, this point. I've actually been on uh, dates before and the girl's like, hey, you're going to have your phone out the whole time? I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> and if that's a problem, you just let's just leave now. Yeah. And by the way, I can't see you guys. All, all it says is Tetherball Arcade. So I'm basically... Oh. Oh really? I'm basically the cheapest webcam. There we go. Of all right time. Now. Yeah, I, we'll we'll go. have our producer patch in there because we're in a professional <laughs> studio. It looks nice. You definitely um, want to be able to see us too. Yeah, or it could be the Google machines trying to shut down the show. Um, I, I something that we were interested in talking to you about today is something that we've bitched about for. I don't know five years on this show, and um, it's pretty much the the need for breaking up Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. Uh, we are yep. sh- we're shadow banned on, on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you've heard that term before, and um, it, it's real in our case. We, we've had a bunch of crazy guests on in the past, and we're going to continue to do so. Um, I wish there was a platform that allowed that, um, because we've had anywhere from Oscar winners to porn stars to huge heads of uh, businesses like yourself and professors, but uh, YouTube distinguishes who they want to show the world and who they don't want to show the world. Uh, last for us personally, it was, uh, Alex Jones on election nights. Uh, Mm -hmm. he popped in entertaining guy, regardless of what you think of his politics. But you know, look, we want to have the, the most entertaining people we can possibly have on here. They shut that show down the second after it ended and not another view has been added to that video. Um, I know you've been a big advocate of that um, and uh, and calling for some uh, uh, 
government antitrust intervention here since 2017 for for some of these big tech companies. Um, how bad is it going to get for for guys like us? When you say guys like you, you mean in terms of censorship or regulation? Correct. Right. Yeah, it's, it's censorship. I don't know. I, I would argue it hasn't been bad enough. I mean, the guest you the guest you referenced uh, ac accused and and got oxygen to the notion that many of the families who had had their children murdered that this was a conspiracy and they had killed their own children mm -hmm. and it was a function of those theories that he promoted and were. Uh, uh, given spread and reach by YouTube, those families, after burying their children, had to had to move because they were receiving death threats. So, you know, sucks to be you guys. I, I, I think almost anything that isn't batshit crazy or doesn't threaten people's health or potentially catalyze violence, mm -hmm. I don't think you guys are going to get much pushback. I think there's well, a that's, lot of that's, headroom. That's not true, though, because we get pushback all the time. I mean, P, anybody, any kind of... On what? Any, what have you gotten pushback on? Well, any any divergent political belief you can see... Well, okay, uh, what is... Define divergent for me. To tell me the content that gets taken off <clears throat> YouTube. Sure. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so anything that is uh, that doesn't fit... Let, well, let's take COVID, for example. Yep. Um, just, what was it, two weeks ago... Yeah. Johns Hopkins uh, published uh, a research study. It wasn't it was it was uh, grad students in their in their pro data science program there published a research study that didn't really fit with what mainstream media is comfortable with. And through whatever mechanism that was taken down, uh, various articles that are it, it's they're not a matter of opinion. They're just a, right. an analysis of fact get taken down from social media all the time because <sighs> I suppose the. Uh, I suppose what they're saying is people aren't smart enough to understand the nuance behind this, so we're just going to remove it entirely. But that is not the right answer. You can't do that. Any any kind of limitation of information like that, for me, is problematic. And for us, by the way, to to yep. to show you what we're going through, when we discuss these topics on our show, right? And they're just yep. topics. And, and the Alex Jones thing, by the way, we completely agree with you on. And we yep. asked him about it, right? Um, but it's, it's one person that we're asking questions to defending himself. Sure. It's not like he's a co-host or anything. And we asked him about sure. the Sandy Hook thing. And we both said on the show, hey, man, that was fucked up what you did. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, to, just to have an open dialogue, at least sure. he was able to apologize and explain and then go from there. Right. Yeah. What Dan was talking about with the covid. Um, once we had talked about that story on our show, we got hit with a label underneath the, the YouTube channel that just said, hey, guys, the CDC's rights on covid and everything else can be yeah. found here. Um, and it knocks down your viewers and, and who's looking at your, uh, you can't even see the, the title of the video essentially uh, when you're going live. Same with the presidential election. We found that there was about 18 to 20 keywords uh, that if we use the word ballots or Biden yep. or Trump <clears throat> or election, it would automatically get hit with a, hey guys, the Associated Press is called the election for Joe Biden and it would lead you to a website. That's kind of where we're going, where clearly sure. AI in, is is involved and they can hear what we're talking about and then they're flagging it. Yeah, but that's that's one of the problems that. that a lot of people don't understand from the data side. Uh, AI, yep. AI is definitely involved. And when whenever AI is involved, you set parameters within that with with con mm -hmm. you, there are intended consequences that you want from that. Like, I don't want this element to show up anymore. But mm -hmm. there are unintended consequences, right? Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. you're talking about AI plus, uh, or you're talking about um, machines plus machine learning, then it definitely has secondary and tertiary uh, unintended consequences. That mm -hmm. I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Not everything is some evil actor, uh, some nefarious plot. Sometimes shit mm -hmm. just goes wrong. But right. there are some times when, uh, <clears throat> like that, that one uh, uh, article from the New York Post that came out that Jack Dorsey had to go on television and apologize for taking down. Yep. That is unacceptable. That is yep. unacceptable. That cannot happen in this country. And, uh, you know, yep. it happens at the micro level as well, particularly during the, uh, during the election. So to me, that's a problem. It's a problem to me yep. that people working in private business have that much power over not just the, the lives of day-to-day -day people, but yep. in our elections. That, that to me is a problem. That, that's a problem where... We're, we're looking beyond just legal recourse, not we specifically, but human beings in America, when, mm -hmm. when they feel like their right to self-determinism starts, get, starts getting stripped away, they naturally get angry 
It's part of our mm-hmm. culture to be angry about that. And then things start going wrong after that. So I'm, I'm, you, you've done a lot of speaking on this issue about mm-hmm. big tech and their rise and how, mm-hmm. you know, the, the wealthiest companies are actually doing better now than they were before COVID and et cetera. Mm-hmm. So if you could expand on that and kind of tell our audience the research you've done, sure. I'm sure they'll enjoy it. So a lot to unpack there. Antitrust, yep. elections, uh, censorship or editing, whatever you want to call it. Let me start with the notion of censorship. So uh, there is an important an important dialogue uh, between people who have dissenting views. And uh, some of those outrageous fringe views that offend me as a progressive deserve opportunity to get heard. And that's and sometimes those fringe views become the norm over time. And so it's important that they have the right, you know, call it for better, lack of a better term, a First Amendment. What I think we're struggling with is that the the platforms that control all the oxygen, that control all how many people see a certain piece of content or a viewpoint, have algorithms that are largely trained to try and create as much engagement as possible so they can serve more Nissan ads. And what the algorithms have figured out, and the algorithms are benign, they're indifferent, is that outrageous or what we'll call novel content uh, spreads faster and creates more engagement in the comments section. So if if you bring on an epidemiologist to talk about the success of vaccinations, that the, the, the vaccination for rubella or measles saved tens of millions of lives, right. it's just not <clears throat> that interesting. <laughs> it's not... It's not that controversial, Mm -hmm. it's not that novel. Whereas if you bring on someone who who claims there's a link between uh, vaccinations and ADHD, that is more controversial and creates more comments from both sides. And it creates more enragement, more engagement, and more Nissan ads. And that's not to say that anti-vaxxers don't have a right and don't deserve uh, speech. But there's gotta be some correction to the algorithm, right? If, well, if I think there are unintended we're, consequences is what you're we're, saying. We're, we're struggling with the difference between freedom of speech and freedom of reach, and that mm-hmm. is the most controversial, incendiary, and sometimes false content. False content and misinformation spreads at the speed of light. Truth and oh, science yeah. spreads at the speed of sound. Mm-hmm. And so I think what these guys, uh, first off, these this is not the public square. YouTube is a media company. They try and pretend they're not. Google tries to abdicate all responsibility. And I know these people well. Mm. They're actually, they don't lean left, they don't lean right. When they go to work, they're not red or blue, they lean down, they're all about the Benjamins, they lean green. And so they just wanna figure out whatever positioning will get them the most clicks and the most money. They are very shareholder driven. And what they have found is that the algorithms are trained to kind of enrage us. And so YouTube immediately figures out I'm a progressive and it starts feeding me videos of senators making Betsy DeVos look like an ass. And uh, so, and then you guys, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that you're center right or just right, and that figures out who you are and it he starts- is. To, I'm not, I am not. I, I don't like that paradigm, but if I was anything, it would be probably a little bit center left, to be honest. It, dep- it depends okay, so on, you and it, I are, it depends on the issue, to be honest. If it's education- You or I are sort of bucket in the same place. Probably, but if it's- That's why you said you yeah. could be his father. Like, dude, I'm on the right, and the, the way this- Because <laughs> I'm so fucking old, is that what you're <laughs> so, Hey, you never know where- where, where was your mom 20 years ago? Anyway, sorry. Um, I have no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> so look, there's, but the question is, the question is, as media companies, they don't have, they have, I think, a certain obligation to, to for the safety of their viewers and things around health, things around anti-vax, and we decided recently things around elections deserve some level of, for lack of a better term, some t- sort of fact checking. Now, does that mean that Whack, what, what's crazy to me might be different than crazy to you doesn't deserve freedom of speech. It does, but it doesn't equate to freedom of reach. And unfortunately, these platforms love the crazy shit. Mm-hmm. And, and when and the crazy shit gets out there around things like health, national defense, or elections, I think they have an obligation to try and, try and do their best to implement some level of fact checking. It's no accident that in the last six weeks, all of a sudden, Facebook and Twitter have started mi- labeling content from from <clears throat> what I would describe as a truly crazy shit. And it's not because they've changed their mind. The, the, the shadow of the uh, Biden-Harris administration is casting a long shadow. And it's like the kids have thrown the mother of all rager parties on a Saturday night. And on a Sunday morning, they get a text from their parents saying, we're coming home early. Mm-hmm. 
they're all trying to sort of clean up their act. And well, uh, I'm, this, I'm sorry. Are you are you implying that the tech companies are worried about how the Biden Harris administration are going to treat them uh, versus how the Trump administration is treated? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think the Trump administration essentially said to Facebook and mostly Twitter, as long as you let me do whatever I want on this thing, I'm not going to break you up or get in your face. Mm. I mean, the, the, Biden, the Trump administration was four years of nothing from big tech. I mean, they filed a suit against Google, but nothing in well, four years really happened. But that didn't even really come back up until October this year, to be honest. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah October was, uh, and shit, right. yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming he thought he was going to win by doing that then, uh, because... I, I thought the same thing, right? Um, I thought Trump would let this go for four years, and then afterwards, for the once he got in for a second term, would then come down and drop the hammer on them and say, "Hey, man, you guys are censoring everything that I'm doing. Fuck you guys," because he can't go more than two terms, right? That clearly did not happen. Um, what do you think Biden and Harris is going to do about uh, any of this, uh, as far as you know, these antitrust suits and trying to break these companies up? So I, I want to be clear. I've, I've been wrong about this so far. I thought the breakup of big tech was beginning two or three years ago. It hasn't happened. I think Biden and Harris will pick up the DOJ suit against Google. Mm -hmm. I think they will then turn their eyes to Facebook, but it'll be more deliberate. Uh, we have these this wonderful friction in our nation of, of laws and courts. And when Trump says, I'm banning TikTok, which, by the way, I think there's a really good argument that the Chinese shouldn't have unfettered access to mm -hmm. our markets with their tech companies, and right. we have no access to theirs. So. I think if there's a legacy that Trump will be remembered for in a positive light, it's that I actually think Trump got China right. Mm. But when he says, I'm banning TikTok and Microsoft has to own it, okay, it's not Microsoft, it's Oracle, our legal system and our <clears throat> laws get in the way and say, that's right. not how it works. So I think you're going to see a breakup. I think you're going to see antitrust, but it's going to be systemic. It's going to be done through, quite frankly, the correct channel, through new laws and the enforcement of those laws. So it'll be probably a 24 to 36 month process, but it'll be Google first, then I think it'll be Facebook. And I actually think Amazon will prophylactically spin AWS because Bezos mm -hmm. is smarter than the rest of us. And AWS, I believe it's gonna be the most valuable company in the it's, world. Is it, is it, it, it already is, is it not? You're, you're talking yeah. about he's going to break it off from Amazon proper. Is that what you mean? Yeah. He'll oh, yeah, spin yeah, it. yeah. I mean, it's uh, Amazon. AWS is already, if it were its own company right now, it would be just like California would be the fifth largest economy in the world. AWS right. would be the biggest company in the world right now. Yeah. yeah. And Dan's valuable. been saying that yeah. for Particularly from a profitability standpoint. Yeah. I think uh, Amazon yeah. delivery services, yeah. they lose about 35% and they make up, Something like that. They make up, they make 75 to 85% of their revenue on AWS. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not great. even close. It, and think about it. The market the market doesn't like conglomerates because I don't need a company to diversify for me. I can invest in yeah. pure plays, and that's what I want. And yeah. if, if, if the largest, most profitable cloud company was a pure play, mm -hmm. that'd be the stock you're giving to kids on their christening, yeah. about mitzvahs. Yeah. Every, every one of us, all of us would own it. I mean, that'd be like and a U.S. Would, treasury bond at that point. I mean, it's, it's, its value is, is, is unquestionable for a very long time. I, it, it's you're right though the market doesn't like big conglomerates like that it likes competition it likes uh, mm -hmm. innovation too and there's no benefit to innovation if you've already got a, a, a stranglehold but like what, why why would you that's do that's exactly it? right that's that's exactly right and 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 typically in a breakup uh, the company win or its shareholders win you know PayPal is now worth something like 14 times more than eBay. Yeah. Each of the seven <clears throat> bells that were broken up in the original Ma Bell, AT&T, were mm -hmm. worth more than the original company on mm -hmm. their own, all seven of them, within 10 years. So breakups are good for shareholders, they're good for the tax base, they're good for VC-backed companies. Quite frankly, they're good for you guys, because if you don't like the way YouTube or someone is treating your podcast, that you should have more than one place to go. Instead, we're all like, oh God, we're screwed. If for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't want us, where else do we go? And, and the fact that YouTube and Google Chrome and and Ad uh, Double Click are all kind of coordinating is scary. And the fact that if you want to be in social media, all roads kind of lead to Facebook. So I think competition is a good thing. The only stakeholder that loses is the CEO who wants to sit on the iron throne of all seven realms, just not Westeros. Right. And typically they're the ones that get to make the decision. But breakups are usually very oxygenating for the economy. And then if you think of us as customers, you guys have a podcast, I have a podcast. Mm -hmm. We want more channels bidding for our business. Mm -hmm. It's just get with better terms, whether those terms are restricting what we can do or what have you. I haven't had any problem. I mean, what I, Yahoo will or YouTube will occasionally take one of my, my videos down or throw ads in there because they say I have music in there that's violating a copyright. And I get that, but it's very ham-handed. 
Um, so I look, I think competition is a good thing. And America has a proud legacy of antitrust. I think it's absolutely time to go in and break these guys up. Uh, yeah, we do too. And, and we've talked about it ad nauseum on this show. If you were to have a best guess uh, out of the out of the, the 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 ones that we've been talking about, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Google, who or in Twitter, who would be first? Oh, I think Google's first just by virtue of the fact that DOJ already has momentum with them. Mm. I think Facebook will be second because people they're an easy target. Sheryl Sandberg has decided she's figured out that her reputation that she should just like leave the stage. Uh, I think she has political ambitions, and anytime she speaks now, no one believes her. Mm -hmm. And I think Mark Zuckerberg is arguably one of the most you know, controversial and disliked people right now. So I think Facebook will be next just because people don't like them. Um, uh, and then I think third will be uh, Amazon, but I think they'll do a prophylactic. The company that won't be broken up is Apple. It'll probably be regulation of the App Store. Oh, a regulation of the App Store. Yeah, because right now they're charging, what, 30% to anybody who's got an app there in the App Store. I know there's been, what was it, Epic Video Games was trying to uh, fight those guys mm. uh, for that 30%. And taking um, uh, what's the big video game that that all you assholes play back Fortnite. then? <clears throat> Fortnite. Yeah, they didn't want to split the profits of Fortnite on there. Thirty uh, percent's a lot because uh, you know I know you're in, in uh, an author as well. Amazon is pretty much just buying up everything in the publishing world to the to the point where there probably won't be publishers in like ten years. To be honest with you, because uh, they own Audible and everything. Else. I mean, there'll be publishers like uh, LegalZoom.com where you just upload your shit and they publish your book for you. That's right. what it'll be. Right, um, because we'll, we'll take the Audible deal to Amazon, right? Uh, they now have a deal where if you wanna publish your, your audio book, it's like, hey, we own the rights for seven years and you can do that exclusively with us and we'll give you 40% or you get non-exclusive rights and you only get 25% of what's coming from us. Um, but the problem is Audible is, you know, as far as audio books go, is 93% of audio book sales. So you're kind of screwed and you have to sign with, with uh, Amazon for that. Um, man, I wish there was more competition out there, but there isn't. How long should people expect to wait for something else to pop up? Another platform uh, that, you know, will be competitive towards a Facebook or something like that? Well, I, I think overnight, say say you force YouTube to spend, I'm sorry, you force Google to spend YouTube. I think in the first corporate strategy meeting of YouTube executives who, do, who all want their own Gulf streams, they say, I know. Let's go into text-based search. And then an independent Google says, I have an idea. Let's start Google Tube. And overnight, you have two fairly robust search engines and two fairly robust video platforms. I think uh, Instagram would be a formidable competitor to Facebook, as would WhatsApp. So I think you break these guys up, and overnight, the competition starts, and the rents they charge, whether you see a rent as somebody deciding what you can air, what you can't, or how much they take in terms of uh, a fee for your being in the app store, those rents go down. I mean, arguably speaking, if you were to break these guys up, I would argue, and I try to appeal when I, when I speak to uh, sen Republican senators, I think the biggest tax cut in history would be to break up big tech. Mm. Because if you think about search, and well, let's think about TV advertising. Nike is a better TV advertiser. They've built an amazing $110 billion market cap company, or maybe it's $70 billion, because they're better at advertising on TV. Nobody is ever better at buying Google keywords for very long than another company. So everybody has to do it, but no one is ever able to establish competitive advantage over the long term, because the thing that's genius on the part of Google and its shareholders is they've made these products so egalitarian and so transparent that if Panera can can get a uh, figure out a way to get drive more traffic for their curbside pickup than Domino's or Chipotle, eventually Domino's and Chipotle pick it up, and they all just spend more money on Google. So mm. if you were to somehow break these guys up and reduce the rents of search, reduce the costs of Facebook ads, it would be kind of the largest corporate tax cut uh, in history that would happen in probably six or twelve months. Right, the rents would go way down. Mm. Uh, what, what did you think of the the hearings um, in front of Senate with Jack Dorsey and all those guys? I thought it was, I thought it was embarrassing. I thought when, uh, first off, I don't think Jack Dorsey. Uh, I, I've served on the board of a bunch of public companies and private companies, and the idea that an individual could manage a company yeah. that's so important part time right now, I just don't. Unless he has superpowers, are not aware of. I think it's negligent for the board to allow someone to do that part time. I, I thought Ted Cruz asking him the kind of tirade that Ted Cruz went on didn't make a lot of sense to me. You know, who elected you? Well, the CEOs aren't elected. They're appointed by a board. Mm. 
And then Jack Dorsey claimed that Twitter has no influence over elections, which is just flat out not true. I thought that the committee hearings, I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought the House Subcommittee on Antitrust were actually pretty thoughtful mm -hmm. hearings, whereas I thought the Senate one just kind of just kind of demonstrated that our elected officials, 93 percent of our elected officials, uh, or I should say 7 percent of our elected officials have a background in technology or engineering. It was clear that the, the 93 percent showed up for that hearing. I right. thought it was a waste of time. Yeah, I, I understand that these people are legislators. That makes sense to me. So the idea has been for a long time that we should uh, elect attorneys or people who are in the field of law run for office more right. than any other profession. That uh, I understand that. But law clerks can write bills. I need people right. that understand science and economics right. and foreign policy. This is the, the way that we handle government in this country is the dumbest shit that I've maybe ever seen ever we it, it's it's almost like mission creep it's it's, it's <laughs> have you lived in another country uh, Where are you I've, from? I've been to a lot of other countries mostly with a gun in my hand so dan, I've, dan I've has seen, killed hundreds of people overseas I've, but it's, it's what oh, he's trying to skate around dan you were in the armed services yes sir so i was what in, did you do uh, i was an infantry man in the 82nd airborne oh um, nice so where, where did you serve uh well in iraq so but oh, i've been okay. i've been to a lot of other countries and I, i've seen how they run their governments i mean it's you, you, you ultimately, regardless of what intentions you start out with, I mean, you can try yeah. for utopia and you're going to end up in communism. You can try for free market capitalism and you're going to end up in a plutocracy. It's just the way it is. And mm -hmm. uh, I wonder here in America, like you, you said, you, you seem to believe that the Biden-Harris administration is going to do something a big, about big tech. I, I think that's not true. You, you think that's a pipe dream? Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I, because, I mean, 3%, if you include PACs, 3% mm -hmm. of all the money that Biden Harris uh, uh, collected over this campaign season came from six tech companies. There's no mm -hmm. fucking way they're gonna they're gonna slap. That's why Trump spent this whole four years. Twitter got him elected. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Twitter is yeah, the reason he got elected, and he wasn't gonna go yeah. after him. That's just the way it is. Yeah, and there's no I way agree. Biden Harris are gonna go after these guys because they're funding their cam their next campaign. This is not gonna happen. Yeah. So with, with that being said, because we all are in agreement on that. Do you think this next stage of Trump is to start his own media company oh, or his own platform? And then go after, uh, like, if you have freedom of speech, what, what, he's bitched about it on Twitter numerous times at this point, and everything he tweets now is getting flagged. What if he owned his own, where everybody could live in that echo chamber, the same as Twitter is, is kind of becoming, um, and he was able to build it big enough within the next four years? Would that help him more? So I get asked a lot about the prospects of a kind of Trump media. And I, I, I need to disclose, I come at this from a point of huge bias. Mm. I'm, I, I don't like the man. I think he's a terrible father. I think it's been terrible for the country. And I, I, now having said that, so I go down, I live in Florida. I go down to Delray Beach, Atlantic Avenue, and there was this thing, this protest on Steal the Vote. And there were a couple thousand people. And I thought, my God, this guy, there's just so much passion for this guy. And he did turn out, he turned out more people in any election in our history of our country, mm -hmm. with the exception of how many Biden Harris turned out the same day. So there's just no doubt about it. 75 million people voted for Donald Trump. Now, now having said that, think about how hard it is to run a podcast. You guys run a podcast, I run a podcast. Yep. It is complex. Try running a media company. Mm -hmm. And I, I lived in New York for the better part of 20 years and had some interface with the Trump organization kind of a, on a second order, their reputation was they were great marketers, but they were terrible operators. Mm. And the idea that they're going to be able to run or he, if he's smart, he'll partner with a media operator. Mm. Uh, but I don't, I, I, I wonder if Trump, the Trump star fades. I'm also, I'm an ageist. I think biology is politically incorrect. And I think an overweight 74 year old man, I think the clock is ticking. So what about a 70 year old guy that uh, that can't remember where he is half the time? Yeah, Biden is made it. Bi is that Biden? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, I mean, I honestly think I, I say this all the time and I, I agree with you. I think I think it is ageist. Uh, I biology, not not this statement. Yeah. I think that if there can be an age requirement for public service, there should be an age limit as well. Uh, I don't think well, there's, a, there's an age limit on the bottom side. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. If there's yeah. an age requirement, you have to be 35 to have the job at least. 100%. So why the yeah. fuck should you be 80 and be able well, to get that job? That's crazy. As a Democrat, we, the way I describe it heading into November 3rd is that we, we were headed to the election in a car and there was a blinking red check engine light. And we're like, Jesus Christ, just get mm. me to the destination. Mm. Joe Biden, in my view, I like the man. I voted for him. I think he's the weakest person, the weakest candidate to win presidency in the last 50 years. And we didn't win this. When I say we progressives or liberals, we didn't win this 
Trump lost it. If Trump just even like the last two months had worn a mask and said, I underestimated this. We need to get after it. I'm going to wear a mask. You should wear a mask. It would have been a landslide. It was 20 cents of cloth that lost him the election. If it hadn't been for COVID-19, he probably would have got, it would have been a landslide. Yeah, for sure. So I, I, I think we got, I think we really got lucky here as, as Democrats. Um, there was no, because when you think about it, name an inspiring speech he gave. Name a policy. Who Biden? He didn't come yeah. out of his basement the entire nothing. time yeah. he was in. Uh, he was yeah. running. But he did. Yeah, he I agree did with something you. brilliant. He wore a mask and he said nothing. And it, 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 you know, sometimes the best thing you can do when someone else is in a train wreck is Sun just Zoo. let it happen. If your enemy's uh, making a mistake, let him. Yeah. <laughs> just stand back. That's three thousand year old wisdom right there. Yeah, I agree with you. Right. I dislike Trump for uh, different reasons than you. I think, like you said, he was right on China, and I think a lot of the foreign policy shit he did was correct. But you can't be a, right. you can't be a cunt and have people like you. It's not how it works. You can't. No, it, it, and it's imagine how bad it is if you're the leader of a country. Because people, our audience is pretty conservative. Our, I get hate mail all the time about being a traitor or whatever the fuck. Uh, I don't care about that. But imagine how irresponsible it is if you have the right answer and you can't get the job done because you're such a piece of shit. That, that's worse than being wrong, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, you can't. Yeah, you're you're right, but I've struggled with this my whole career. The difference mm. between right and being effective. But when you were overseas, you my I, and I don't know the uniform, but my sense is you probably have a flag somewhere on your person, right. on your right shoulder or something. Uh, and that yeah. immediate is that wrong? Nope. Left shoulder, right shoulder. Yep. Right. Shoulder. So that immediately connotes something. Mm. And our brand, that flag, generally speaking, around the world, usually connotes. Okay, we get it wrong all the time, but our heart's in the right place. Right. When people saw you with a gun, they thought, okay. That guy's well resourced, well trained, right. believes well, yeah, in what yeah. he's doing. If somebody shows and, up with a Russian flag on their shoulder, you worry if you're going to get shot for no reason. If somebody shows up with an American flag, you don't really worry about that that much. I would say in a, right. in a, and, in a country like that, yeah. And that is that is so powerful for mm -hmm. us because it means people want to do business with us. People want to send their kids to our colleges. People don't want to aid and abet people who are enemies. Mm -hmm. People want to watch our media, buy our software, and I think we have lost a lot of that moral high ground. I think people now longer, I, we used to always be the good guys. Mm. And I'm not sure, I think we've lost a lot of that in the last four years. So I'm hoping that there's a lot of repair over the next- Well, there's um, a there's a very uh, fine, well, there's not a fine line. There's a wide divide rather between having the moral high ground and capitulating. I think uh, Obama's strategy on foreign policy was really, really bad for this country. Um, uh, some of the the deals we signed were, were horrible. And the, the problem was it was more about press than it was about getting things done uh and trump's the same way but all the, the one thing he did keep behind closed doors pretty well were all these middle east peace deals that seem to be going on now um that that to me is something that he got right 100 percent. the the middle east stuff he got right 100 percent. and uh china well no china he got right but the messaging right was mm -hmm. problematic in a lot of ways it turned some people off the the Middle East stuff, he just kept it quiet the whole time. Right. You know what I mean? And it all worked out pretty well because you can't get Bibi Netanyahu and Saudi Arabia in a room if everybody knows it's about to happen. Right. Because they will both say no and walk away. Guys, I apologize. I have to hop. My boss, my boss, uh, Jim Bankoff, and, and his boss, Kara Swisher, is on a call right now. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm Look, we know you're more important than us. You can just say that. Um, oh, dude, we all know I'm more important than you. Come on, let's be realistic. <laughs> except for the guy, except for the guy who carried a gun to fight for, for freedom and our way of life. I, 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 I mean, I'm sincere when I say this. I really do appreciate your service. Thank sure. you for that. Yeah, and thank you for doing the show. Uh, you've got a new podcast called The Prof G Show. Uh, you should check that out. You're a cooler version of Malcolm Gladwell. Like, you're a guy. Go on. He's got cooler hair than me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're a guy. I wanna Go on, you guys. I, I want, you're a guy I want to fuck next to, and yeah. I, we can enjoy the go. night, you know? Yeah. When you are in Delray Beach, look me up, and we'll go grab a beer, and I'll do the same when I'm in Austin. I'm going yeah, back to South sure. by Southwest. But uh, again, guys, congrats with the pod. Thanks, man. Thank you. We'll see you in March. Take care. Bye. Bye.